Hello everyone and welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. A Ford dealership has asked us to repair a door panel. As of yet we don't know the makeup of the door panel. So when we get there we'll have to make an assessment of the materials involved. And as we mentioned in our last video, for any given damage the technician has to assess the proper approach to repairing. What's the method? What are the materials that we're going to use in our repair? So this time as we approach this door panel we're going to let you make the judgment we're going to let you make the assessment. So come on let's get to work. So what we're facing here is a vinyl door panel that's been burned by a heat gun. So the window tinters have got a bit careless. That's not an uncommon thing to see these days. This is going to be a tough repair to hide, don't you think? Also, and you cannot see that in the picture, this is a brand new Mustang with all the factory stickers still on it. I don't even think I want to touch it. I think a brand new car deserves a brand new panel, and a new car buyer certainly deserves a new panel, don't you agree? So I'll suggest it. Okay, so the service manager says the new door panel cost $1,200, and they'd rather I fix it. But I really don't want to, so let me make this suggestion. They use a franchise that claims to do magic on interiors, and that's really what this needs. And since he does their work every week, why not get him to do it? Reasonable? Well, the service manager is just hanging his head. He said, sorry, we really want you to do it. So then, my answer to him is, if I'm not successful, you can still order a new door panel? And he said, yes. And I'm still going to get paid for trying this one. Yes. Okay, then. So, with that agreement, we can't really go wrong, can we? So, shall we give it a go? Well, if we thought a vinyl heat repair would work on this door panel, we need to look a bit closer at the vinyl immediately around the damage. See how the grain or texture has bled out due to the heat? So, doing a hot repair would do more of the same and we would only make that flat area wider. Also, the contour will have to be absolutely perfect, and that would be better accomplished with a cold repair that could be sanded. But what about the texture? We will have to construct a suitable texture. Besides, there is another spot that needs texture only. So developing a proper grain is going to be key to repairing this panel. The first thing I'm going to do is anchor all the bits that want to stay down. And for that, I'm using a clear, flexible gel CA glue. What I'm going to do is accelerate that and then hold everything flat. Now I'm using the chill bar. If I keep it moving, then the glue won't have a chance to stick to the chill bar. But I'm just keeping everything flat as it cures. And then anything that doesn't want to behave, I'm just cutting it off. And let's try more of the same and see if we can't get everything to lay down properly. And before we get too far, we'd better mask off. As they say, cleanliness is next to impossible. 
So we're going to give it a good try. I'm using a thicker gel on this application, trying to fill in the area where the vinyl is missing. And I'm using the back side of a piece of tape just to get the contour right. I'm using 100 grit sandpaper to sculpt this to the correct contour. And my chill bar has become a sanding block because it was handy. And here is a bit of color to reveal our progress or the lack of it. Now we can see what areas we want to target and fill in a little bit more. And just a note about sanding over dissimilar materials. This glue is hard and sands easily. The vinyl is soft, yet doesn't sand easily. That's because it's flexible and it's resting on a flexible backing. So when a force is applied to it, it moves out of the way. So in this case of dissimilar materials being sanded at the same time, the harder filler will sand away much faster. So care needs to be taken to not sand it to lower than the level of the vinyl. So we've got to take great pains to create this top edge, make it perfectly level with the top of the door panel, and we have to take some time to finesse this part that will be visible from outside the car. And the color shows us that we are slowly but surely getting there. And now we are at the point where we can use the thinner gel and sand it while it's wet. That way we pick up any sanding dust and mix it with the glue, forming a nice filler. The secret is to sand vigorously with 220, just kissing the surface. So I'm going to keep repeating this step especially it's important around the transitional parts here where the glue meets the vinyl. We want a nice smooth transition.
Again, the guide coat of color shows us just what areas need to be worked. And we can target just those areas and gradually bring our repair to perfection. This may seem a bit tedious to watch, but this is the investment made in order to get a retail quality repair. Generally, retail quality repairs take twice as long as a wholesale quality repair because so much more is expected. Using an air dry filler at this stage will serve two purposes. It will help to level out our surface, provided we use the Bondo spreader. And it will give us the soft touch that we would not normally get by using the glue. Because when the hand touches this spot, you're not going to be feeling vinyl. But if we use a soft touch filler, then maybe uh, it won't be noticeable that that's not vinyl there. So from this angle, you see we're not there yet. Normally, I do not sand these fillers, but in this case, I am striving for that perfect contour. And it looks like I've found my proper sanding block. So this is just a little bit awkward since I don't have enough room to make a nice clean sweep. You know me, guide coat again. So it's time to take a break and straighten up my back. Let's just get an overview of the panel. The repair area is looking pretty good so far. I think it's come along at this point better than I anticipated. And we're looking down the panel to where the grain is missing. There it is. So we're going to get ready here for our texture step. We're going to do one more final sanding.
And we'll do a little tidying up around this button where the LED is located. That's in the bad spot for me. I'm doing a little prep here with acetone to try to melt the surface uh, smooth a bit. Now what I've done, I've matched the color and I have fortified what would be my leather dye with some plastic primer so that it's a little bit more rigid of a coating, not so soft of a coating. Uh, the purpose of this is so that each texture droplet wants to stand up and remain firm on its own. And because the heavier droplets tend to be shiny, I am adding a flattener so when it's dried, it dries down to the sheen of the door panel. So what I'm doing while I'm spraying this first application on is I'm judging how this texture looks compared to the original texture. That way I can make a determination if I need to go heavier and uh, what steps I need to take to make that blend in. First, I am lowering the air pressure because I want to get as wide a droplet as I can for a base texture here in this spot. When you do this, the texture looks too big because if it's going to be that wide and that heavy, it's going to be too tall, wouldn't you think? You'd be exactly right. It is going to be too tall, but because we have firmed up the texture with the plastic primer, then we can sand off the tops of it and be left with just a wide base. So we're going to put a few applications of the wide texture down with a view already to sanding the tops off. So initially, that might look uh, frighteningly large for a texture, but we move on. Initially, use 400 and sand in one direction only. After that initial sanding, you'll be able to go back and forth. And in here, you can see the advantage of a water-based coating for the texture. You can immediately work on it, whereas any solvent products will remain soft and tacky for quite some time, even days. Now we're ready for the intermediate texture step. Now I want to up the air pressure to get a medium texture. 
And as you can see, I'm having trouble spraying because some of the paint has dried right at the needle of the gun. Uh, the reason sometimes uh, when you have your hair dryer next to the gun, it'll dry some right at the tip. So now I've got the medium texture I like, and I'm blending that out a little bit further than the heavy texture. So with the hair dryer in one hand, we're able to dry each pass and get multiple passes of texture in just a few minutes. The medium texture I am also sanding with 400 so that this feels nice and soft when you run your hand over. As you can see, I have to clean the cap and the needle again because we've used the hair dryer right alongside the gun. My goal specifically here is to put a final color coat on the repair area and see what it's going to look like when finished. Or maybe I'm not finished yet, but this will tell the tale. So I've decided it needs a bit more texture to blend. So I'm taking a few seconds to make sure I have that spray pattern just to my liking. Typically, the final fine texture I leave rounded. I don't sand this one, and that causes it to blend better with what's on the door panel originally. So, if there is one takeaway from this video, I hope that it helps you to see how to construct a texture. Use a water based spray that is strong enough to stand up tall even when sanded. Use the HVLP touch-up gun to dial the size texture you want by regulating the air pressure. Sand down the big textures to half their height. 
A medium sized texture on top of that can give you the diversity of hills and valleys to give you that randomness that disguises your repair. The final light texture can be left rounded. Many techs have been looking for that holy grail of a spray texture that they can purchase. I would suggest that it cannot be simply purchased. It must be created. The aerosol solvent textures typically give you one choice of spray. They must be sprayed from 18 to 24 inches away to be truly effective. They remain soft for days. Come back the next day and you'll find they've laid down and left a shiny spot. They're very expensive too, but to me, they are all garbage. Texture is more about developing the skill. That's why body shops that have the texture aerosols call me to do their textures for them. It's kind of the same way in the music recording business. People spend big money on various equipment to sound better. A more expensive mic will reveal just how bad they really do sound. <laughs> it's more about bringing in the right talent. The right talent makes the difference. And it's a little bit hard to see here, but I am blending a fine mist of my final color application. And what do you know, I remembered to spray the other side. And let's not forget our texture only spot further up on the panel. So all that's left is to clean up our button where the LED is and uh, also clean up the door jam in case there was any spray that got past our masking. This final video using the cell phone is a little bit too close and a little bit too fast. I apologize, but it gives you an overview of the areas with the texture. Thanks for watching and thanks for helping out in the decision making process here as we do real repairs for real customers.